One perk of working remotely from Europe to ski or board more during the year is the Apres ski scene, which is like nothing in North America. Cause you know the world is beautiful, so beautiful. Cause you know the world is beautiful, so beautiful. And I just can't hide how I feel about you. Nothing can take that away. Cause you make the world so beautiful, so beautiful. Alright, it's our first day in Teen, and my curse of only sun and no new snow in Europe continues. I think this is day 47 out of 51 over the past two and a half years, but if you're not gonna have fresh powder, I'll take bluebird days. All right, well, we might as well start with the Apres ski scene here in Teen Val d'Isère, which is crazy and focused around La Folie Douce, which is a collection of restaurants and an outdoor club up on the slopes of Val d'Isère. But if you're staying at the highest part of Teen like we are, Val Claret, it's basically just one chairlift ride. Unlike La Gargut in Villa Tea, which I featured in the last vlog, La Folie Douce is not open past dark. It closes at five, and that's because it's up on the slope. La Gargut is actually down at the base of the mountain, so they can stay open past dark. But that's kind of what makes it cool. It's a party scene in the snow-covered mountains in the middle of the day. People dancing, drinking, having a good time. And then, of course, afterwards, trying to ski or snowboard back to the base. At 2 p.m., people are still just lounging around, having drinks, finishing up lunch, waiting for everything to get started. They do have some entertainment during that time, but the party really gets going a little bit later. If you can, I definitely recommend checking it out because you cannot find these scenes in the U.S. You gotta enjoy it while you're in Europe. So I do have to give credit to my friend Jen, who loves the European apres ski scene, knows all about it, and has actually started a blog called Here for the Apres. So I'd say go check that out. She's got a lot of great tips about apres ski in Europe and other just general tips you should know about going to Europe to ski or board. She really lays out how to get the max out of coming to one of these apres ski scenes. Let's talk about the setup that we have for work. We have a two bedroom and two bath apartment. Every room has a balcony, much nicer than what we had at Villa Tea, but not as big. So the way we're tackling the workstation is to have everybody sitting at the dinner table with their laptops. We've got a full kitchen that's really well equipped, so we're gonna do some cooking. And on those nights, because we have our workstation at the dinner table, we've decided to use the coffee table as our dinner table. But again, of course, because it is a work day, if you're gonna make a dinner, it's gotta be something you can do pretty quickly because it's gotta be done on your lunch break. One funny thing about where we're staying is that there's a sign by the elevator that warns you not to leave any of your belongings in the halls or common areas. If you do, the concierge will throw your stuff out into the street so it can be stolen. Damn, that's harsh, yo. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Tu ne peux pas laisser des affaires dans l'art. On vit dans une société civilisée. Hey, vive la France. But this guy's not gonna make this vlog any better. We drove here yesterday and I know in the past video I said you should use your travel days to explore little towns and other activities that you can do in Europe because those are the days that you're not working in the afternoon. But we decided not to do that. We were concerned about traffic resulting from the French school holidays which can be notoriously bad. So we packed up the car early in the morning and set out for the three hour drive from Via del Tea to Tien. And we did hit traffic but fortunately it was going in the opposite direction. It was insane. So we'll be looking out for that during the next day we transfer to another resort. The advantage of this being the first day in Tien is that it's a Sunday, so I don't have to go in and start working by 3 p.m. Let's go check out the snow and confirm whether it actually is better than Villa Tea last week. This is just off the Borsat chairlift in Val d'Isère. I've gone a little bit to the right of the groom trail because I think the snow is a little bit better, and yeah, so far, this snow is much better, a little choppy here, but much better than in Villa Tea last week. It's a little bit colder here than you noticed yesterday. Although it is very nice right now, temperature wise, I like this. Still not the fresh powder you'd want, but if you're not gonna have the fresh powder, I'll take this great sun, mild temperatures, snow that is not icy any day. Teen Valdezer is the entry level of the large European resorts. According to Ski Magazine, it's the eighth largest resort in the world. Number nine and 10 are Whistler and Park City in North America. The top eight are in Europe. Teen Valdezer is the baby of the group. So we're having dinner Sunday night outside and we heard all this loud music coming from down at the base. We assumed it was another crazy party. And of course it was Coco Rico. And there were a ton of drunk people around, falling down, wrestling trying to carry skis. It's madness here. Let's have a quick art history lesson because I am on the Monte 
T-Bar on the upper left-hand side of the trail map of Val d'Isere, named after famous French Impressionist Claude Monte, one of the most influential Impressionist painters back in the late 1800s. C'est Claude Monet. I think it's really cool that in Val d'Isere they've named the Monte T-Bar after him. M-O-N-E-T. Monet. Yes, Claude Monte. Dil comme moi. Monet. Monet. No, no, I think it's Claude Monte. Monet. You need to look it up. C'est Claude Monet. A very important strategy if you're going to work remotely from Europe is to be as close to the slopes as possible. So our accommodations this week at Teen is a ski-in, ski-out apartment rental at the Val Claret part of Teen. The reason I think this is such an important point is that when you're done skiing or boarding for the day and have to get back for work, if you're not right at the base of the slopes, you're going to have to spend time getting back to your accommodations. And that's going to probably cut your day short. Whether you have a 20 minute drive or waiting for the bus, you want to maximize your time on the mountain. So what does that look like for us in our apartment? Well, we're on the seventh floor. So exit the apartment, take the elevator down. Right when you come off the elevator, we have a ski locker for our apartment where we've kept the skis. Just simply open that up, grab your skis, and all you have to do is walk out onto the slopes. It's about a 100 to 200 foot walk to the actual chairlift. And when you're coming back at the end of the day, you'll have enough momentum on your skis or snowboard to go all the way up to the door. That really maximizes the amount of time I'm going to be able to spend on the slopes in Teen before I have to come back and start working. All right, another work day later today, but now another sunny ski day. I should let go. Because life can't be all about skiing and boarding and work, we are going tubing at night. For the next one, we're going belly down. Slow. Okay, I didn't film every single run, but that was a success. So how has the remote working been for the week? Well, pretty easy, actually. I haven't been totally swamped at work, but the days that have been busy have been totally manageable. I don't use a big screen even at the office, so sitting at the dinner table of my laptop worked fine. No real issues with fatigue because I was able to get to sleep by 12, 1 in the morning and wake up in time to hit the slopes. If you get slammed at work, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. But again, the point is that this is a work day and you're skiing in Europe. So if you get slammed at work, guess what? You still got a couple hours on the slopes, which you wouldn't get back home. All right, last day in Teen Val d'Isere. My streak of sunny days is definitely over. Cloudy day, sun is occasionally peeking through, but that's not enough to call this a sunny day. So obviously I have a, you know, last day, not great sunlight, it makes it tougher visibility for me being spoiled, but it's decent enough. You know, I can make out the snow, go along this ridge here. Good last day of skiing in team. But what about price of accommodations? If you're gonna work remotely from Europe and you're with other people, you can actually get more bang for your buck. When we were in Villa Latea last week, the overall cost per bedroom is $900. Let's ski in, ski out in the fifth largest ski resort in the world. If you go to Snowbird and stay at the Cliff Lodge, you might have to pay $500 for one night. Here at Val Claret and Teen, the highest elevation, we obviously went with a much nicer place. But again, the cost is pretty reasonable per bedroom compared to what you might have to pay in the US. About $1,500 for seven nights. Again, that's a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. Ski in, ski out at the highest elevation of the eighth largest ski resort in the world. You can obviously find cheaper options. We just happen to go with a really high end place in Val Claret. All right, as I'm back at Foley Deuce on this bad weather day where it's totally empty, let's talk about laundry. If you're going to work remotely from Europe while you're skiing or boarding for more than a week, you may want to do laundry. We've had laundry at every place, but you got to realize that what you're promised may not be what you get. In Italy, we had just a washer, so we knew that if you wash your clothes there, you're going to have to let them air dry. Here at Teen, we have a washer and dryer. It's a dual combo. Unfortunately, the dryer really doesn't work, so we've washed all of our stuff here but we're still having to air dry everything. Either way, it's an essential if you're gonna do more than a week or two, and you don't wanna bring a ton of clothes with you. Any resort you go to may have laundromat options, but it's just so much more convenient to do it in your accommodation.